Hello, in this screencast we're going to talk about the rotating magnetic field. First thing we're going to do is have a quick uh, review of the underlying principle of the rotating magnetic field. So assume here I have a three phase motor and the magnetic flux in each of the pole pairs is represented by these sinusoidal signals. So for example, in this phase here, if we have an AC current flowing through the windings of uh, this pole, then the magnetic flux would look something like this red shape here. So the magnetic flux density would be at a peak at this point. And we'll refer to that as BM, so magnetic flux density max. If I take a, a point in time, so here, in the red phase, there is no current flowing through the winding, so there's no magnetic flux, but there is current flowing through the windings in the yellow phase and the blue phase, and they'll cause a, a magnetic field that has a direction represented by these two uh, vectors. The summation of those two vectors is this resultant in, in purple. When I move on to the next point in time, there is no current flowing through the windings in the yellow phase, so there is no magnetic field uh, due to the, mag the yellow uh, phase. So the magnetic fields are due to the blue phase and the red phase, because red is reasonably positive here, and the blue is reasonably negative here. Okay, so that gives me these two magnetic uh, vectors with a resultant here. And so we go on. So you can see that the magnetic field is rotating around the, the stator. And there is another video that I go into a little bit more deal, detail on, on the rotating magnetic field. Okay, so what I'm going to do here is uh, try and show that mathematically. So the first thing we'll do is look at the, the uh, strength of the magnetic field. So if it's represented by this sinusoidal uh, signal there, here, then the magnitude of the magnetic field at any instance in time varies. Let me just go back so you can see it's growing as we go through in time and then it changes direction and then back to zero again. So the magnitude of the that vector can be represented by bm so that's the max magnetic flux density times sine omega t so this is the sinusoidal waveform and omega t is the angle in radians so omega is 2 pi times the frequency and that uh, vector or the magnitude of that vector always acts in this plane which is uh, at zero degrees, because this is mechanically how the, the, the rotor, sorry, the stator is, is wound. And similarly for the yellow phase, if we go around 120 degrees, you know, the windings for that um, pair of poles is at 120 degrees from, from this pair of poles. And then we go around to 40 degrees, the uh, blue phase is mechanically 240 degrees away from from the red one okay so we can say that the the vector strength from any of the phases you know the magnitude of it is bm sine omega t or for the yellow it's bm sine omega t plus 2 pi over 3 because there is a phase difference here it's 120 degrees that phase difference there is 120 degrees and for the blue it's 240 degrees so that angle there is 240 degrees and then the pole pairs are uh, displaced mechanically from each other by 120 and 240 degrees. So we can represent them by three separate uh, vectors. So if that's the, the red phase, we can say that the horizontal component of that vector is BM sine omega t. Okay, there's the BM sine omega t cosine theta. So this time case cosine zero and the vertical uh, component will be bm sine omega t 
sine zero. Similarly for the blue and yellow phases, they will have horizontal components and vertical components, where the horizontal component will be bm sine omega t plus two pi over three due to this angle here. And then cosine two pi over three, because that's the mechanical uh, construction of the, of the stator. And the vertical phase, sorry, vertical component will be m um, sine omega t plus 2 pi over 3, and it'll be the sine of 2 pi over 3. And exactly the same with the blue, except that the angles change. Okay, so if we want to add all of those together to get the resultant, what we would have to do is add the horizontal components and then add the vertical components, and we'll get some resultant. So let's say the horizontal components will be the sum of the horizontal components, so cosine t to here, cosine t to here, cosine t to here, and the vertical components will be the sum of um, the vertical components of this one, sine 0, uh, sine 2 pi over 3, and sine 4 pi over 3. So we'd have to add all of them together. All right, so if we were to add the individual components, um, you know, we put in a plus sign then between the uh, horizontal or vertical components of the three phases and the horizontal components of the three phases. Okay, where they're all added together. Okay, so let's look at these uh, individually. Okay, so. Um, if we look at both expressions here, so uh, sine of zero is zero. So this expression is is gone. The sine of two pi over three is the root, th root three over two, and the sine of four pi over three is root three over two, minus root three over two. Uh, similarly down here, cosine zero is one, and the cosine of two pi over three is minus a half, and the cosine of four pi over three is minus a half. Okay, so our, our two equations uh, reduce down to that. And you can see that in both uh, the uh, vertical and horizontal components, there is a sine A plus B, so sine A plus sine B. And from trigonometric identities, sine of A plus B is equal to sine A cosine B plus cosine A sine B. So I can split this out. I have root three over two BM sine omega T cosine two pi over three plus cosine omega T sine two pi over three. And over here we have minus three over two uh, B max sine omega T cosine four pi over three and cosine omega T sine four sine 4 pi over 3. And that's exactly the same down below. So I've just split um, the, um, the trigonometric identities out. Okay, so what we're going to do then is show that uh, cosine 2 pi over 3 is minus a half. So that becomes minus a half sine omega t. And the sine of 2 pi over 3 is plus root 3 over 2. Cosine 4 pi over 3 is minus a half, so that becomes minus a half sine omega t. And the sine of 4 pi over 3 is minus root 3 over 2, so that becomes minus root 3 over 2 cosine omega t. And down below with the horizontal components, cosine of 2 pi over 3 is minus a half, sine of 2 pi over 3 is plus root 3 over 2. Cosine of 4 pi over 3 is minus a half, and the sine of 4 pi over 3 is minus root 3 over 2. Okay, so I'm just going to multiply these out then. So root 3 by minus a half is minus root 3 over 4, and root 3 over 2 by root 3 over 2 is 3 over 4 bm cosine omega t. And over here we have a minus by a minus gives me a plus, so that's root three over four sine omega t, and this becomes plus root three over four cosine omega t. Similarly down below, uh, minus a half by minus a half is plus a quarter bm sine omega t, minus a half by plus three root three over two is minus root three over four 
B max cosine omega t minus a half or minus a half is plus a quarter B max sine omega t and minus by minus a plus that becomes plus root three over four uh, B max cosine omega t. So uh, we can see here then that sum of the um, components cancel each other out. So we got a minus sine. Yeah, so that is a minus, that's a plus. So that goes. And down below here we have, yeah, minus root three over four, and we have a plus root three over four BM cosine omega t. Okay, so once we do that then, what we left at the top is uh, three quarters plus three quarters is three over two, BM cosine omega t. And down below, the sine omega t component remains the same. And then we have a quarter plus a quarter, which is a half. So one plus a half is three over two. So we get um, a vertical component of three over two BM cosine omega t and a horizontal component here of three over two B times sine omega t. All right, so I'm just gonna replicate that over here. So that vector, this resultant vector, so we're saying that its magnitude is three over two times whatever the max um, magnetic flux density is. And the horizontal component, sorry, the horizontal component is BM sine omega t and the vertical component is BM cosine omega t. And that doesn't really look right because normally the vertical component has a sine value on it and the horizontal component has a cosine value on it. But sine and cosine are related to each other by uh, 90 degrees. So we can actually say that the horizontal component is three over two BM cosine omega t minus 90 degrees. And the vertical component is three over two BM sine omega t plus uh, 90 degrees. All right, so if I took those values and put them into a spreadsheet. So this is our, our time, time t. So this is of a signal that has a frequency of one hertz. And if I got three over two uh, BM, and in this case, I assume BM was one, cosine omega t minus pi over two, these are the values I would get. And similarly for the sine, they're the values I get. And then the resultant becomes 1.5. So the resultant is, if I just go back, the resultant is just the horizontal component squared plus the vertical component squared, and then just get the uh, square root of those. Okay, so get this, um, this value here. And the angle is the inverse tan of the vertical component over the horizontal component. Again, if I go back, is the inverse tan, this angle here, is the inverse tan of this component over this component. So when I put that into a, a spreadsheet, this is what I get. So you can see I get a vector of one of magnitude 1.5 that rotates. So it starts here at 90 and rotates around. Um, and maybe I just show you that in the Excel spreadsheet. So here's the spreadsheet. So there's the frequency of one, and uh, here in my uh, formula cells, I have the x component is sine omega t. Omega here is B3, and this is the time. And over here, I've replicated that value as cosine of omega t plus 90 degrees. And there is the sine of it, which is 3 over 2 sine omega t minus pi over two. And you can see, um, actually that should be plus. Uh, you can see that the values 1.5, 1.5 and so on, they, they match identically. 
if I put that onto a scatter plot, so if I scatter plot the x and y values, uh, this is what I get, which you can see is a, what I hope you can see is, is a circle. So if I just go back to the, the PowerPoint presentation, 